tic-tac-toe, trade as you go. Get ready, get set, because here we go. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is April 12th. Now, Thursday, being tomorrow, is going to be my live streaming event. Me and Lily Star go live for about an hour, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. As soon as the trading bell goes off, we're live. And we are there specifically to talk to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. Now, my hope is that you're doing some due diligence and you find yourself a nice prime chart that looks hot and you want to share it with us so we can look at it together. That's what I'm hoping for. But if you've got a stock that you've been holding and you want us to look at it, we will look at it. But remember, we're not doing a deep dive and chances are you know more about this stock than we do. And if you haven't seen any light at the end of the tunnel, chances are we're not going to see it either. But We'll look at it with you if you want us to. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Now, I had a wonderful thing happen to me this week. One of my videos got real hot. As most of you know, I don't get a lot of views on my videos for whatever reason. I get between two and 300. We were up at 500 for a while, but two to 300. Well, the other day, the video HCNWF. Whoa, <laughs> loved it. It hit almost 11,000 views. Well, when I saw that, I also saw that they started giving me information on YouTube. And one of the things they brought to my attention was they say the reason my views could be low is that my videos are too long. Now, I know they're over 30 minutes. I try to keep them under 30 and I'm not doing real well. But what do you think? Are they too long? They suggested if I'm talking about multiple subjects to make multiple videos. I could do that. It would be a little tricky, but it's possible. Looking for a little bit of feedback here, folks. All right, this show, as you know, is dedicated to finding those hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm out there every day looking for them on every single market because, right, penny stock is any stock under five bucks, and they are everywhere. And to keep things simple, I do my research at one site. Most of it anyways, right here, the otcmarkets.com website. It is set up for the OTC markets, updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC, so you're getting all that pertinent information current, constantly, so quit going to Google. Plus, they bring in a lot of information about the major exchanges. So this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration, and you're probably going to get a lot more research done in shorter amounts of time. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. All right, that isn't looking too good. It never does. We are refreshing our page. <sighs> okay, it looks a little better, but we're not going to brag about anything. Our dollar volume is getting away from that $1 billion. We were under it just a couple days ago. We're now getting closer to that $2 billion, which is really where we need to be. We are now at $1.6 billion bloody share volume just isn't going anywhere. We're just right around that five. We need to be at 10 billion. You'll see second gear when we get there. Trades, bloody heck. <laughs> we have fallen again. We were almost at 250,000 trades, which is our floor for a long time. But then we've been suckling down towards the 200,000 and we're right back down there again, suckling some more. Quit suckling it. I'm getting tired of it. Okay, so the market isn't doing too well, but I've got some stocks that were doing real well today, or I think they're going to do well. I've mixed it up a little bit. Let me show you what I got. Ooh, have I got a hot penny stock for you. This comes from the NASDAQ. This is ticker NCMI, National Sign Media Inc. Not our typical under the radar stock by any means. Did you see this one today? You must have. She was flying high up there for everyone to see. I think she hit like 400% gains before she started to fall back and her volume was just simply incredible today. Well, I noticed this stock two days ago and she has been doing nothing since two days ago. And when I noticed it, it was through a filing. I love to poke my heads into these filings and just see if there's anything there. And I found one for her and it had some juicy information. So I extracted that and I put it in a post and I put it on Twitter and I put it on my Discord group. Then I didn't give it a second thought. 
Boy, was that a mistake. She had a nice run that day that I just didn't pay attention to, and today she's had a huge run. And I think we need to take a look at it because she's got three or four filings that are very important that I overlooked, and I think it all has more to do with who they are talking about in this information, the affiliation with this other company. I think that's the big catalyst. So NCMI, she finished the day at 44 and a quarter cents with 114% gains. That's how she finished. So what does National Sign Media do? Well, this is an American cinema advertising company. They're responsible for all those ads up in the movies at the theaters, and they make a lot of money doing this. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Extraordinary. I mean, just booming, folks. We jumped from 5 million to 363 million. Now that's something like, I don't know, 75 times her normal volume. But let me put this in a different perspective. Look at our total share volume for the entire OTC market today, 3.3 billion. We are over one tenth of all the shares sold on the OTC market came to this company. There are 12,600 different companies on the OTC, and she got one-tenth of all the shares. This is why I do my due diligence through the charts now instead of going to the news. You can have a lot of good news. There just isn't enough volume to go around for all that good news. So it's a crapshoot. It's a roulette wheel. You don't know what's going to come up a winner or a loser. So I'm looking for hot charts that have news behind it, hoping that the combination is much stronger. So what is the share structure on NCMI? Outstanding share count is 82 million. You're not going to find this in a financial on the major exchange and they don't give us the information. So I did do a search on Google. I found all kinds of numbers. I mean, from 40 million to 70 million to 80 million, I have no clue. All we know is it's under 82 million. As I said, they're doing pretty well when it comes to revenues. Well, they're doing okay, not as good as they were. You've got pre-COVID and post-COVID. We know that COVID shut down all the movie theaters, so they weren't doing anything during that period. In 2019, 2018, they did $440 million, just under a half a billion dollars. Don't forget, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here for that to make sense to you. But after COVID, she dropped hard down to 90 million and 114 million at the end of 2021. Looking at the quarterly for 2022, we got three quarters here. 54, uh, 121, 141, 146. We got 146 million there when they only did 114 last year. So they've already surpassed last year's revenues. And we've still got one more coming out and it is due right now. I mean, like in the next two to three days, they filed an NT 10K. You know what that is. An NT 10K means not filing our 10K on time. And this buys them 15 days. Well, that was on the 29th. So that's going to take them to like the 14th and today's the 12th. So we should see that come out and it looks like it should be a good one. But that's really not the catalyst. That's going to be a bonus. I'll tell you that much. What we've got here is this 8K, this 13G, this 13D, and this 13D. Now, I'm going to jump into these real quick and show you what is going on. We're going back to March 28th here. A 13D, a 13G, these are beneficiary ownership. This is when they take on a new partner. When somebody buys enough shares, they actually own a percentage of the company. Well, back on this date, Signmark Holdings. This is a very large movie theater company. Signmark bought over 43 million shares and that gave them 25% of the company. Now we jump up here to April 3rd, another 13D. Scroll down. Same company, Signmark Holdings makes another purchase. This time they buy 48 million shares and they get 27% of the company. We are over 50% of the company is now owned by Signmark. But that's not it. That's not even the big catalyst I'm talking about. This one here, the 13G. They had another partner come in. You want to see who this is? Right there. 
AMC Entertainment Holdings. This is AMC, APE, A-P-E ticker. This is the one on the chart that goes crazy all the time. They have bought into this company. They've bought 16 and a half million shares and they own just over 9% of this company. So you've got roughly 70% of this company has been bought by AMC and Signmark, right? And they now own all the advertising going on in their own movie theaters. What a good business that is going to be. And the last filing we got here came out today. This is an 8K and it's actually bearing bad news, but it seems to have translated into good news. They have announced a bankruptcy. And this isn't the first time we heard about it. They've been talking about this for well over a month now. And today they brought out this filing, but they say it comes with a restructuring program already done. They have taken all of their debtors, all those people they owed money to, and turned them into shareholders. They gave them shares for all the money that they owed them. So they got rid of their debt. And now they got two huge investors, well-known investors. The charts are hot. They're making money. I mean, everything is really good. And I think the charts have got more to give because I'm thinking that all these investors with AMC, ticker APE, I think a lot of them have got their eyeballs on this stock now. At least that's the way it looked today. Let me show you. Nothing different today. We're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. It also goes by TOS. And you can get it for free just by going over to TD Ameritrade and signing up for their free trading account. So we are looking at NCMI, National Sign Media. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. In August, we hit our high of $1.85, and at the end of March, we hit our low of $0.10, cents. and it has just been a fall between the two. She slowed down, actually started going sideways here, climbing very slowly, and there was no volume to talk about before these last three days. She started to bring it in, and it's been growing ever since, and the price has been shooting up. We started down here at 13 cents, and we got up to a high of about 64 cents. So you are looking at roughly 400% gains from start to finish. Our technicals, our oscillators are all hot. Everything's pushing up except our RSI. We had a big drop here after market hours, and that is showing up here as a 59 on the RSI now. 20 day, one hour view. So even when the 200 day SMA got to her, she didn't do anything. She just kind of laid there. I mean, she's pushing up a wee bit, but there's no enthusiasm until this filing came out on the 10th. That's when that first filing came out about AMC. You don't see the one about Signmark having any big deal here. They had two of those. Where's the bump? But you get it for AMC. That's why I think you're going to get those ape investors watching this. Then, of course, you had a tumble down. Why, of course? Because all these people that were trapped here wanted out. This was big money for them. That was a nice gain. That's about a 150% jump right there. So all these people took their gains and got out. Then it became attractive again. It's down here cheap. So all these investors come back in and they really rushed this price. She went from about uh, 16 cents up to 64 cents. Virtually another 400% gains before she came tumbling back down. And it looks like she is under that nine day SMA right now. Our technicals are cooling off. Everything is pulling down with that right now. And our RSI is still over 55, but barely. Five day, five minute chart. So there was our first jump. She came back down, all them profit takers, cut it through the 200. And then right here at the beginning of the day, she jumped through that 200, did not look back. She ran till about quarter after one. That was a nice run. Lots of bounces in there, but she is steady riding on that 20 day SMA. Then she's falling away. And right now it looks like she is still falling. Looking at our technicals. Well, yeah, she is falling, but our MACD says she is trying to turn right now. She hit the basement floor on the RSI. Actually came down to about 25. The floor is at 30. Right now she's at 33. So again, you've got more profit takers. That was a huge run there. Now, where did these profit takers come from? Well, you know, when you go back, you see this zone right here. If I grab a line for us, and I'll do this real quick. I'm just going to tag the high right here. I'm going to go back. Well, anybody in here, 
anybody in here. All these people right here. All these people were the ones that jumped and got out on that fall right there. This is a much deeper, bigger consolidation of investors. It covers a much broader time span. So you could have a lot of going sideways here before she bounces because if these people don't believe it's going to grow, they want to get out. There's money on the table now. They've been holding this too long. They'll take what they can get. Going down to that five day, five minute. As I said, she had that jump. She has come through that 200 and she's fallen back. I think she'll come back to the 200 here. She could come underneath just like this, you know, like a rubber ball on water. Blah, 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 like that. She could come down and come up under that. Everything is sitting there above everything. So it doesn't look bad. Matter of fact, the last thing I want to do is throw my Fibonacci up here. I want to see if it is at the 50% mark. So I'm tagging the bottom of the surge, the top of the surge, and I am looking for the dead center. That is my goal right there, the 50% mark. Then I'll get rid of this so it's easy to read. And let's see what we got here. Oh, we're underneath it. Normally, if your price goes up and back down and keeps less than 50%, you can expect it to continue falling normally to the next strongest SMA. Well, there's no other SMAs here except the 200. So she could come all the way back down here to 31. Now, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of activity on this. You do have all the changes. But I'm thinking it's all related to the ape investors. That's just a hunch. I don't know. But she did have one-tenth of the volume today. No stock is getting one-tenth of all the market's volume. Where did all those people come from? From one area. And I think that's the area, the ape investors. So she is calming down now. She is falling down now. But you could get another play. She comes down here. It could become attractive again. And you could see another run. Watch the volume. That's going to be the telltale sign in this game. Every day, I tell you, we're looking for hot OTC and penny stocks. Well, I've got one for you. This is ticker FHLD, Freedom Holdings. At least that's her ticker and her name currently because she's going through a lot of changes right now. I mean, literally, she's going through a change of control. Now, when I looked at her chart, it's not your typical breakout chart and it's not a surge chart. It's a bounce chart. I mean a serious bounce chart. This thing is bouncing from seven cents to 49 cents. That's a 700% gain in one day. Then it falls down to 10 cents and it jumps to 39 cents. That's 400% gains the very next day. And it's doing this day after day because she's got a super duper small float. Sound like a stock you'd like to watch? Kind of thought so. So freedom. She finished the day at 9 cents with 10% drop. She's getting ready for another big bounce. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's only got one of those green ticks we're always talking about. Transfer agent verified. We want to see verified profile as well, especially if you're going to be in a pink for a long hold. You don't get a lot of verified information with the pink. And these two green ticks I'm talking about, they represent a lot of important information that's being validated behind the scenes. So if you're in these stocks for a long hold, it's best to see both of those green ticks. But if you're just trying to catch the bounce and get a quick gain, don't even worry about it. And don't worry about that shell risk. This told us that they were in business, but they weren't making any money. But now that everything is changing, things are changing. And saying that, none of this matters anymore. They do have a new business, and I'm going to share that with you when we get to the filings. So what was the relative volume today? Well, it was a big increase. That's like, what, 600% increase going from 747 shares, way under the radar, to 4.2 thousand. Not big numbers, but it is a big increase. She's getting more attention. Share structure for FHLD is the big deal. See, it was way back here. See what I just did? Came down to dividends and splits and clicked that button. It was in 2021, they did a huge reverse split. One in 5,000. I don't know why they did it, but they left us with under a million shares in the float. And I went around trying to verify this. All I can say is I couldn't find anything to say otherwise. So it appears to me 
This is why she is bouncing so hard on the chart because we have less than a million shares. If she sells 10 million shares in a day, that means she has to sell every share on the market 10 times over. Do you know how that can make a stock run? That's why you get big bounces like that. Looking at her financials, we have nothing at the end of 2022 and we've got nothing now because they weren't making any money. They were a shell risk. What we've got is change. We've got a couple filings over here. All these are their financials. The quarterly reports are the Qs. There's your annual, the K. And then back here, one in August, one in February. We've got two 8Ks. And I'm gonna peek in on both of these for you. The one in August, they were breaking a deal. On June 23rd of 2022, the company was going to get carbon zero asset management, but they backed out of that deal because they said something was breached. And the other 8K comes out on the 10th of February. They made a deal with MedCan Industries. MedCan purchased 40 million shares of the company's restricted stock for $50,000. The CEO of MedCan is becoming the CEO and the chairman of the board for Freedom. And they are taking over all obligations, debt, business operations, everything. They're taking over the entire company. So things are happening right now, but we don't see a real strong catalyst, just a change of control, which is hopeful. But what we're really interested in is this float. It is so small that just a sneeze causes the charts to jump. So any news that comes from this guy, any deals he makes, anything he puts out could cause this stock to run really hard. Let me show you how big these bounces are. Really not much of a chart to look at, but we don't need to look at much of the chart. This is ticker FHLD, six month, four hour view. But there's not a lot of trading going on, right? She's got an average of 747 shares a day. That doesn't mean she's selling 747 shares every day. That's just the average. She's got lots of days she's not selling anything. But this does go back six months. This is August. We were at uh, 16 cents there, 16. And then we had a low in December of triple zero three. Now look at the distance between that 16 cents down to triple zero three. Folks, there is literally thousands, tens of thousands of percent gains in this very tight band, which looks flat and doing nothing. There's a lot going on there, but it really picked up right here on the 10th. And I don't know why. There's no filings and there's no news presses that I could find with this date. Spontaneous combustion. She flew, looks like she started down here at that triple zero three and went to 49 cents. Oh my God, folks, I can't even figure that out. Is that 15,000% or 150,000% gains? That is huge. She did fall back down here, bounced back up, fell back down, and now she's at nine cents. Our technicals, even with all that falling, they're not falling. They're just maintaining right now. MACD and the PPO are going sideways. The only thing that took a drastic fall was our RSI. That went from 80 down to 51. Now I'm gonna skip the one hour. I'm going right down to the five minute because there's not much to see on the hour. I want you to see these bounces. We got three days here, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. Right here is where the 11th starts. This is the 10th. She was down here, they tell us, at 002. Let's go with 002 instead of 0003. It's probably easier to swallow. She got all the way up here to virtually 30 cents. That is 15 times 1,500% gains. In other words, for every $100 bill you invested here, you made $1,500 up here. She did fall back, and she was down here somewhere around, oh, 12 cents. She opened up yesterday and hit 49 cents, 350% gains, falling all the way back down here to seven cents, bouncing back up on the same day, back up to 40 cents. Oh my God, you're looking at 600% gains there. She fell back down here on the same day. This is the 11th. She is now at 10 cents. Day starts today. She jumps up here to 39 cents. You've got almost 400% gains right there. Right day after day after day, hundreds of percent gains just catching these bounces. And now she has fallen again down to nine cents. 
We're looking for another bounce, folks. So I would keep my eye on FHLD. Now remember, this is an OTC stock. You can't trade it pre-market, after-market. You cannot buy it with a market order. You must use a limit order. If you see this thing getting ready to bounce, remember, it doesn't have a lot of volume. So chances are you're not going to get a warning. All you're going to get is an opportunity to get in, and then when it bounces, opportunity to get out. I like the volatility. I like the little tiny float. I like the possibility of the gains we can make. Last stock we're going to look at is a penny stock on the OTC. This is sticker PSYCF. This is Psyched Wellness. And I'm psyched because she's got a hot chart. She's got that perfect atypical breakout chart we're always talking about. You know the one. You got that ski slope 200-day SMA coming down and leveling out. Price right up underneath it, cutting through. Well, that's what her chart is doing right now. And she's got lots of hot current news to back up that chart activity. So I think we should be looking at this right now. So psyched, she finished today just a little over six cents and just a little under 3% gains. On the middle tier of the OTC, we like to call this the better tier, the QB. It's better because they have to audit their financials. This is verified digits. I've already told you about verified information. You want verified numbers too. And you can get them on the QB. When you're on the pink and they use disclosures, you're only getting numbers that are passed to you by the management. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. Who knows? With the QB, you know they've been accounted for. They're all accurate. And we got all the green ticks you could want. We've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Independent directors, got to have these if you're going to uplist. I know they needed them when they went to the QB. And if they plan to go to the NASDAQ or anywhere else, they're going to need them then as well. And what I really like here is their penny stock exempt. This is very reassuring, folks. The literal definition means the company's been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars in assets during that entire time period, and they've kept up with their financials. What we're saying is they're responsible. They have proven themselves to be reliable. So even though the price is at six cents on the OTC market, it is not a penny stock. Oh, guess we shouldn't be looking at it then. Well, remember, folks, the more you know, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So what does this company do? They work with mushrooms. No, not the magic mushrooms. Psyched Wellness is a Canadian-based health supplements company dedicated to the distribution of mushroom-derived products and associated consumer packaged goods. The company's objective is to create a premium mushroom-derived product that have the potential to become a leading North American brand in the emerging functional food category. Now, I have a hard time getting excited about these kind of mushrooms. But as I said, the charts are hot. They've got a lot of good news. So it looks like an opportunity just waiting to be taken advantage of. So what was the relative volume today? Well, we had an increase there. What is that? About uh, 300, 350% increase, jumping from almost 18,000 to 65,000. Yeah, they're not very big numbers, but what we want to see is an increase in volume starting to grow. You don't want to get here after there's millions of shares. You want to get in early. Share structure for this company. All right, outstanding share count, 135 million. They tell us that's pretty much it in the unrestricted, and they say the float is 113 million, and shame on me. I did not check this out, so I'm going to have to go look this up, and I'm going to throw it right up there for you. If I don't find one, I'll just put three question marks. If you don't see anything up there, <laughs> I didn't blow you off. I just spaced it off. All right, let's go check out the financials for Psyched. We got nothing on the annual, and we got nothing on the quarterly. There is absolutely nothing here right now. Her assets, let's see what she's got over here. Balance sheet, total assets, $3.2 million, with $2.7 million of that in the bank. And her liabilities, chump change, $250,000, a quarter million dollars, and she's got $2.7 million in the bank. So she isn't making any revenues, but she does have money. Let's take a look at those disclosures. We've got no new disclosures here to take a look at, so let's go take a look at that news. As I said, they've got lots of news. 
I've scrolled back to August of last year, and each one of these news presses that's highlighted is a deal they've made, a new distribution agreement or something. This one right here, they tell us that they announced a purchase agreement with Choice Wholesale for 60,000 units of their Amantia Muschiera Tinkster called Calm. You saw a picture of it in that eye drop bottle. This is the tincture coming from that orange mushroom. And they say this gives you stress relief, relaxes you, and gives you a restful sleep, which everybody likes. And each one of these is a separate deal. A fulfillment center with Ship Hero, partnership with Space Station, distribution agreement with True Life. And then here recently, on the 23rd of March, they tell us they got their product onto Amazon. And then today they announced they got their product onto Facebook. These are huge markets, some of the largest markets in the world most likely. And you know how many health conscientious people you have on Amazon and Facebook? Lots. So they don't have any revenues quite yet. Their assets are keeping them going, but we see the revenues are going to come. And the charts are looking good, folks. All we need is a little push and we're going to see a nice jump. Let me share that chart with you. Let's get psyched about psyched. This is ticker PSYCF, Psyched Wellness. This is a six month, four hour view. Our high bubble on the board is back in July of last year of 14.3 cents. Huge fall to the end of December when she hit three and a half cents. Bounced off that low bubble up to the 50 day SMA where she's entangled herself for quite a few months here until these last few days, some volume came in and then it went away and we got some today. But even through all that mixed volume, she has been climbing steadily, coming from underneath all of her SMA. She was on the floor. She came up through that 20, 50 and 200, got way up here fell back to the 50 day SMA, bounced, and she's put herself on top of the 200 day SMA. Looks good. All of our lows are higher than the ones before them. That's what we're looking for. And look at those oscillators. They're brilliant. Our PPO and MACD are just pushing up to the moon. Our RSI is clear up there at 69 and pretty level. No fighting going on there. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. No, I didn't draw that red line. That's a 200 day SMA. Boy, isn't she flat going right down the middle of the screen there. We hit our low bubble here. She went sideways for four days before she decided to jump and jump she did from four cents up to seven cents over the next three days, about 75% gains. Coming back down, bouncing, but look, she is right on that nine day SMA like she's always been. It got a little crazy here, a little different there, but she's sitting up there nicely perched. Our technicals, well, everything is still pushing up. Our MACD has leveled off a wee bit, but it isn't falling. And our RSI did fall, but it's back to climbing right now. Looking good. Five day, five minute. All right, so she was underneath the 50 back here. Slowly climbed up. Once she got on top of the 50, look at how big those bars got. That shows you where she wants to be. This is where she's putting her energy. Not big bars underneath, big bars on top. Once she showed her enthusiasm, she just started going to work laying bricks. Do -do 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 Had a nice jump today. God, that came from all the way. Wow. She fell all the way down here to five cents and jumped to seven cents. That would have been a beautiful entry point right there. And again, she is climbing on her nine day SMA. Got a little wacky here. Went from one extreme to the other extreme, you know, and then she's leveled out and she's on top of her nine day SMA. Our technicals, RSL is trying to push up, though it's not falling. Our MACD has had a negative crossover. These last three bars definitely hurt it, but it's not hurting bad. And our PPO is pushing down, but it's way up over that pink line. I think this looks pretty good. I mean, for a nice bounce, all she needs is a piece of news. Her float isn't that great, but it isn't that bad either, right? 115 million. Told you I was going to look it up. <laughs> so I would keep my eye on this one. They are now on two huge markets where health minded people are. Even those people could end up investing in this. So PSYCF, not the kind of mushrooms I invest in, but I think it's worth a consideration. <laughs> wild variety of stocks we had today. NCMI, the rocket stock, who made the deal with AMC Theaters and Signmark. I think this is hot because of the ape investors, just my opinion. But there was one-tenth of the entire OTC market's volume in this company today.
The other company has got those wild bounces. FHLD, super duper small float. She's going from seven cents to 49 cents, from 10 cents to 40 cents. 700% gains, 400% gains, back to back in the same day. You got to put that one on your watch list. Look for them low spots for entries. And that last one, psyched. Well, you know, I like to invest in mushrooms, but this isn't my kind of company, but I like the setup. I like the way that chart is right now. And they put out enough news that if the right piece of news just falls in place right now, we could see a good run there. God, doing research and due diligence, it isn't as hard as you think. It can be when you're actually doing it for someone else. I work hard for you, but I do enjoy doing it. Remember folks, doing DD, it's not hard work. It is fun. This is where you're going to find your money. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.